This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. The government wants to hear from you on copyright sovereign immunity. No, seriously, they really do want to hear from you. This is the Federal Register. This is the way that the United States government talks to the public about how to change the rules regulated by administrative agencies. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with this process. In fact, it's really obscure. So let's go over it for a moment. Rulemaking is part of administrative law. Administrative law is part of administrative agencies. What do we call the presidential administration? So literally, I'm, I'm not kidding here. The president is the executive branch. The president is one person or one office. Maybe the president can't regulate trade or food and drugs or communications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all by themselves through one office. So through the uh, Administrative Procedure Act, through various uh, acts of Congress, the executive branch is allowed to create agencies that do the jobs of the executive branch or the legislature can also create agencies, I believe. Um, but these agencies can be created. The executive branch runs them in a sense or runs some, some, other in, some of them are independent, um, but the executive branch usually runs them. In fact, there's a Supreme Court challenge right now as to whether or not the president runs all of the executive agencies to the point that they can remove that he can remove or, or she could remove the head of the agency at, at will, basically. But rulemaking then is the process that the executive and independent agencies use to create regulations called promulgation. So they create regulations, they have to follow a procedure, and when they follow that procedure correctly, then the rule will be enacted after the correct period of time. So usually there is a notice part, so the public is informed of the rules, the public can comment on the proposed rules, the public can access the record and analyze the data, Remember the FCC did this with net neutrality and there was a big controversy over how many hundreds of thousands of comments in favor of abolishing net neutrality came from people who weren't alive. So you have to be able to anal analyze the rulemaking process. The agency analyzes and responds to the public comments. The agency creates a permanent record of its analysis. The agency's actions can be reviewed by a judge. There are several steps to this that we're really not going to go entirely into now because we want to go over this actual rulemaking. So here we are, the sovereign immunity study, notice and request for public comment. So they're not actually changing the law yet. They're asking for your information about examples where you've run into the copyright sovereign immunity question, like Rick Allen and Blackbeard. Remember, Rick Allen is the videographer who was contracted to video dive and video the Queen Anne's Revenge shipwreck off the coast of North Carolina. And then North Carolina went on to use his copyrighted video outside of their agreement and outside copyright law. But North Carolina won because North Carolina has copyright sovereign immunity. Congress, the United States Congress tried to make a law that eliminated sovereign immunity as to copyright, but it was ineffective according to the Supreme Court. We have a whole video on it. I'll post a bubble. So now the U.S. Supreme Court has said that you can eliminate sovereign immunity for copyright for the states, but you have to make findings as to how prevalent copyright infringement is. So the very best thing that could possibly happen then has happened, and they're asking for exactly that information in preparation for making that law or that regulation. So the U.S. Copyright Office is initiating a study to evaluate the degree to which copyright owners are experiencing infringement by state entities without adequate remedies under state law, as well as the extent to which such infringement appears to be based on intentional or reckless conduct. The office seeks public input on this topic to assist it in preparing a report to Congress. So by August 3rd, you can get your written comments in. They'll give you the address here, copyright.gov slash docs slash sovereign immunity study. And so here's the study. You can then use this submission form to make a submission about your experience with copyright and state sovereign immunity. I think they're looking for your direct experience, not please send us Rick Allen's case. Uh, they already know about Rick Allen's case. You don't need to tell them about it.
Supplementary information. On March 23, 2020, the Supreme Court issued its decision in Allen v. Cooper holding that the Copyright Remedy Clarification Act of 1990, which attempted to make states subject to liability for copyright infringement to the same extent as other parties, did not validly abrogate states' sovereign immunity against suit. So they still have sovereign immunity. Senators Tillis and Leahy sent a letter to the Copyright Office requesting that the office research this issue and determine whether there is sufficient basis for legislation. So they go through the whole thing the about, about the doctrine of sovereign immunity. A federal court generally may not hear a suit brought by any person against a non-consenting state. So literally, if a state says you can't sue me, or actually it's the inverse, if they don't say you can sue me, then you can't sue the state successfully. They have sovereign immunity. The state accidentally totals your car. If they don't have a rule that says we compensate you when we accidentally total your car, you don't have a remedy. If the state decides to compensate you for your totaled car, great, but they don't have to. Enacted in 1990, the Copyright Remedy Clarification Act amended the Copyright Act to expressly provide that states are not immune from suit for copyright infringement. The last time they studied this under Register of Copyrights Ralph Oman, the office subsequently received only 40 responses. Hopefully they'll receive more this time. Most comments were submitted by copyright owners, some of whom expressed concern about the risk of future infringement by state entities, while others discussed past acts of infringement committed by states. The office summarized these in the Oman report. After the office issued its report, the CRCA was introduced, etc. Then, the Florida prepaid case, as we saw in the Rick Allen case, Florida prepaid said that in a similar way, patents, have this same problem. This year, the Supreme Court decided Allen v. Cooper, a case considering the validity of the CRCA's abrogation of state immunity. In Allen, a videographer brought an infringement action against North Carolina after the state published his videos and photographs of a sunken pirate ship online without authorization. North Carolina contended that it was immune to suit and the CRCA failed to properly abrogate its immunity. Applying the analysis in Florida prepaid, the court held that the CRCA failed the congruence and proportionality test for the same reasons as the Patent Act with respect to the legislative record, the court found the evidence of copyright infringement supporting the CRCA was not impressive or scarcely more impressive than Florida prepaid, amounting to only a dozen possible examples of state infringement. So they need more. So April 28th, 2020, Senators Tillis and Leahy sent the letter uh, starting this process of opening up a study. And then here is the study. Pursuant to this request, the office is seeking public input in multiple phases. The office is providing 60 days for written comments from interested parties on the topics outlined below. To fulfill the request, you submit factual evidence and other verifiable information. Please include empirical data and other quantitative analysis in your response. If describing a litigation matter, please include information sufficient for the office to identify the matter. Please include materials if possible. And here are the subject of inquiry. Please provide information below. The works infringed, the acts of infringement, the state actors who committed the infringement, whether the infringement was intentional or reckless, and the basis for that conclusion, whether the infringement was committed pursuant to a state policy, whether the state was contacted by or on behalf of the copyright owner and their response, whether a lawsuit was filed as a result of the infringement and the results, and if a lawsuit was not filed, why? They also want to answer questions like, to what extent does state sovereign immunity affect the licensing or sale of copies of a copyrighted works to states? Do copyright owners provide different payment or licensing terms? Have copyright owners changed aspects of their sales or practices? Do different states take different approaches? Are there particular states which frequently infringe more? What remedies are available? To what extent did copyright owners file suits under the Copyright Act? In your opinion, does the availability of injunctive relief against states change anything or provide an adequate remedy? To what extent are there state law causes of action that may provide a remedy for copyright infringement actions by state entities? Are there state court cases in which a copyright owner has been awarded a judgment on such a claim? To the extent state law provides a cause of action relevant to copyright infringement, how do the elements of the cause of action differ from the Copyright Act? Act. In your opinion, are those remedies adequate to address the needs of copyright owners? How can Congress determine whether copyright infringement by a state is common or infrequent? 
What metric should be used? Has the prevalence of infringement increased in recent years? What empirical evidence is available about such a change? To what extent, if any, have instances of actual or threatened infringement by states increased since the Allen decision? Can they be expected to increase? How do different states handle claims of infringement? Would state agencies carry insurance policies? Are laws, regulations, or policies that states have adopted minimize the likelihood of a remedy or infringement by the state entity? How frequently copyright owners claim a state actor has infringed? How state entities typically respond to credible claims? What state entities are eligible to assert sovereign immunity as a defense? Whether state entities have the right to waive sovereign immunity? whether any records track copyright infringement claims, identify any pertinent issues not referenced above. And so you just go to this website and click on this button and it will help you submit a comment. I'm trying to click on OBS, that does not work. So short comments, instructions, uploading instructions, PDFs, etc., first names, organizations, and then you go down here and it takes you to a website where you fill everything in. There's your comment, there's your uploads, there's your name, Names, and you can leave your contact information. So let us know what you think about that. If you are, like Mr. Allen, affected by this directly, then you should be commenting on this. Does lawful masses intend to make a comment on this? I mean, you can, it's not illegal for you to do so. It just probably would be disregarded if you're not one of the, uh, this isn't a standing case, but think about the standing requirements. If you're not a person who has had their copyrights infringed by a state, or has a legitimate fear of having their copyrights infringed by a state, then you probably shouldn't comment. But if you have had a direct experience, definitely comment. If you have direct concerns, not just remote concerns, you're probably good to comment too. And if, if your comment is not something they're gonna take into account, it's not like you get in trouble or anything. I, you could probably find a way to get in trouble on one of these comment things, but so just don't lie, but uh, you know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, the comments below. That's our show, everybody. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Lawful Masses is a community-supported legal education and legal news channel. Thank you very much for your support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law and YouTube memberships and Floatplane memberships and Twitch subscriptions. Special thanks in the month of July to BU number one Simmons. And thank you to the July $50 plus supporters, Nicely Done Defense, Joe Tyson, West Elge, Citizen of the Sovereign, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Jan de Grey, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Cute Grills in Your Area, Strawberry Pup Tart, Longreach Jones, Definitely Not Prenda Law, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Gregory Conklin, Josh Baker, Rudolph Becherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Jay Dixon, Hot Grills in Your Area, Ammonite, and Brandon Abel. And thank you to the July $5 plus supporters. Everybody's scrolling on the LED panel and will be on the crawls in the videos that drop. I love you all. Have a good week. I'll see you soon. Bye. Leonard, you take Kaylee as your favorite person to laugh with her, to smile with her, to go on adventures with her, to support her through life tough moments, to grow old with her, and find new reasons to love her every single day. I do. Kaylee, do you take Leonard as your favorite person to laugh with him, to smile with him, to go on adventures with him, to support him through life tough moments, to grow old with him and find new reasons to love him every single day? I do. By the powers vested in me and the state of Utah, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may virtually kiss your wife. <laughs> Oh, oh, my. My. Oh, my. Oh, my. oh, look at the poster they made.